Cambridge Muslim College, training the next generation of Muslim thinkers. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'll begin with the question just asked. So the, the key here is a scientific study of consciousness, as in uh, some form of investigation of consciousness through, by being conscious or through conscious means has always been a human endeavor. It's like a bird does not need to learn uh, um, aerodynamics to fly, right? Now, the neuroscientific study of consciousness was popularized by Francis Crick of the DNA double helix fame. So after he had solved a couple of key uh, questions in biology, he shifted to neuroscience. And this pattern of scientists uh, doing remarkable or uh, um, achieving remarkable um, uh, accomplishments in a different field and then moving to consciousness has been, uh, has been not infrequent in past 50 years because people tend to realize that, that uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the last standing um, uh, uh, conceptual problems in biology is that of consciousness. Now, Francis Crick, uh, uh, in, in his papers and uh, more, popularly, more popularly in this book, popularized the notion of neural correlates of consciousness. His view, uh, the, and it, it, which generated, uh, which has generated a program of research for past at least 25 years. The, issue here is that let's find the minimal set of regions that are correlated only with conscious experience and nothing else. Why? Now, everybody realizes that uh, the problem of consciousness, uh, why should a physical entity like brain be conscious at all, is a rather intractable problem. But if we were to find that minimal set of regions which, are, which make the brain conscious, then that will be a tractable first step because then you can look into its physiology, its connectivity, its computation, and so forth to kind of make, you know, then uh, maybe the path may be clearer then. So the question was, how do you find neural, neural correlates of consciousness? Now, to all of you, it, might have, it must have been clear at some point of your life, or, or maybe uh, always, that not everything that falls on your sense organs, on our sense organs, reaches consciousness, right? So at the moment, you are, li you are hopefully listening to me, and you are most likely not conscious of the sensation of your toe in your feet till now, now that I have mentioned many of you would be. Now, unless, uh, of course, if you are, unless you, you are meditating on your feet. But now, so you can come up with many, very many situations where identical sensory input generates different phenomena, different conscious phenomena. Now, to give, give, a, give a representative experiment, uh, the black thing is, is the computer monitor, the participant is sitting in front. Uh, you present um, a stimuli, in this case a square or a diamond, for a very small duration in the tune of few tenths of seconds, few tenths of milliseconds. Then you uh, Put in, uh, uh, then uh, you put in a blank gap, and then you immediately uh, um, you, you show a mask. Now, if this gap is small enough in the tune of a few tens of milliseconds, then uh, on, uh, then the person's, uh, person will either uh, will occasionally see uh, these separately, and on some other trials they'll only see a white blob. So they'll be at times conscious of a square or a or a diamond, at times not. And then you give them a, a fourth choice, uh, press a button. You have, you have to choose whether it was square or diamond. And then, then uh, tell us or uh, convey whether, whether you saw, you consciously saw that, or you made a guess. You did not see, but you, because it was a fourth choice, so, so you guessed. And then you can use various neuroimaging methods to, uh, to, uh, to, dis uh, to see what, wa uh, what activity was distinct between on trials when the participants said they were conscious compared to when they said they were not conscious. There are other ways, so for example, you, you can, what, I use, what are called meta-stable percepts. So, so if you focus on this, this cube for a while, you'll find that what you see switches between this and that. And you can also generate other situations wherein you can, put, uh, you can give uh, two different kinds of pictures to, to the two eyes. In that case, what you'll see, what, will you, 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 if the pictures are of a particular, uh, have particular characteristics, then what you'll see will not be an overlap, but you'll occasionally see one picture alternating with the other picture. Yeah. And then, then the participant's task is to, to convey when, the, when, which, when his percept shifts between the two. Oh, sorry. And look at the regions which were active during the, this percept. 
Now, to take a, take a, let's digress. Now, in the brain, there are certain regions which are called primary sensory regions, wherein the information reaches for the, with these, these are the first relay points for information coming from below, from, uh, from, from uh, subcortical regions. So, for example, uh, for uh, this talk, you can just, we can just focus on the visual cortex. So, the, the deep red is the, the primary visual cortex, and the light red are the visual cortical regions. Now these are dis as these are distinct from another set of regions which I'll be calling which I'll uh, be calling in this talk as frontoparietal regions. These are the regions, the white regions uh, up here. These are regions typically which will typically light up or the neurons will be more active in some form of or various forms of task difficulty, various forms of attention, and so forth. So a typical picture would be that the patient with damage to these regions. Uh, will have difficulty in with, with, with difficult task situations. Now, across vast major vast majority of uh, experiments done for neural correlates of consciousness, the typical picture would be that a, vis a visible or conscious word will will have act will show activity in frontal and parietal regions, uh, or uh, a visual uh, or a uh, consciously heard sound, and the the invisible word or invisible stimuli will have, will have activity limited to their respective sensory region. And if you look at, if you look at it in terms of time, you'll, uh, what you want to find is that early on, the activity tends to be limited to the respective sensory region, and only after a few hundreds of milliseconds does the activity reach um, a frontal and parietal regions. So, the idea would be that that uh, act, uh, that uh, activity limited to sensory regions are unconscious. Only when they break and break into these uh, these frontal and parietal regions do they become conscious. And and um, now uh, it's very difficult to make, um, to move from um, from neural uh, neural findings to philosophical theories. But uh, but proponents of various Philosophical uh, theories of consciousness find support in this view. So, for example, proponents of the very many higher order theories of consciousness will say that, yeah, it supports us because uh, visual cortex is the first order representation. Sorry, so higher order theories of consciousness will, in simplest, simple terms, uh, have that, that consciousness occurs when you re represent a representation. So, in this case, the first order rep uh, representation occurs at the primary or at the uh, sensory cortex, and only when that representation gets re-represented into the frontal parietal region do we have a conscious percept. Or, or, or another theory, for example, what's known as the uh, works, global workspace theory will say that, that uh, brain as such, um, uh, various brain modules cannot communicate with each other, it, because, because in the metaphor of uh, of, uh, of an auditorium, only the where the spotlight falls, that is the only thing which can be accessed by, by various, by various uh, cognitive and neural modules. So, if, so, if, uh, uh, so only the information that goes there uh, in the conscious spotlight can be accessed to, uh, to all parts of the brain, so, uh, so all, all, all parts of, of the mind. So, for example, so, uh, and its neural avatar is called neural workspace theory, uh, wherein once the information has reached these regions can they be can they be accessed to by various neural modules and there are very many things so, so uh, information integrated theory uh, integrated information theory is not committed to a, a, any set of neural region but it will be kind of be happier if the if the if activity was more widespread than if activity was very limited uh, furthermore, these regions, as I mentioned, are kind of seat of human intelligence, uh, um, of attention, of are, 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 are more distinct in, in humans compared to monkeys and so forth. So it all kind of starts giving a nice picture. So let's spoil it now. Now let's go back to, the, to that representative experiment I showed you, uh, that, that there is a, um, a brief a fleeting stimuli, which is then masked. Now think of it. Do con the key question is, do conscious and non-conscious trials, or in trials marked by the subject as conscious or non-conscious, do they only differ in conscious phenomena? Now imagine you are, an, you are a subject in one of these experiments. Your task is to detect a very fleeting stimuli, which, is, which, will, be present, which will be on the, on, the, on the screen for 20 milliseconds and will be masked quickly. And it is obvious that you have to make a lot of effort to see that. You blink and you miss, right? Not only that. The, that instruction has given you a goal, and your goal is to see that 
that stimuli. So every time you see that stimuli, you have achieved a goal. So A, it's a difficult perception, so which means that, that uh, um, conscious and unconscious trial may differ in how how well you can manage that perceptual difficulty. B, conscious trials and are kind of implicitly linked to a goal completion. And thirdly, this requirement to ask, did you see it in this scenario wherein you will most of the time not be sure, did I see it, did I not, is a, is a, a difficult introspective task on its own. So now, which means that, that if my, my view is that these three confounds um, uh, 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 these three confounds are, uh, are, uh, are the reason behind frontoparietal activity, then something which is very easily visible, something which it does not, is not linked with some kind of goal completion and is not linked to introspection should not lead to such activity. Now, if you give it, give, a, give it a moment of thought, you'll find that most of our day-to-day -day conscious perception falls into this category. So while you're seeing me, your goal is not to see me. Your goal may be to make sense of what I am saying. Uh, seeing me, I, I am not. I don't occur here. I don't appear here fleetingly. I am. It's pretty easy to see me, right? And while you, uh, while you are seeing me, you do not introspect in your in your head that did I see him, right? So now now I take you take you through uh, a task. Now you can do it uh, do it in your mind. So you're presented with three numbers. Your task is to detect these numbers one by one. First four, two, then two, and then three. Uh, in the stream of letters that follows. Yeah, so you'll have a long gap, and then you'll see a, um, something uh, uh, on, the, on the screen for one second. Okay? And each time you see that, that, that your target letter, you press a button. Okay? So now, now I can be fairly confident that all of you saw letters. You saw number as well, but you, all, but you did see the letters, right? Now, so on some trials, uh, I'll, and now I'll just uh, pass quickly. Letters, occasionally letters, there won't be letters. So then the person, the, the, the participant will just sit and wait and they, because they know that the next thing to appear will be their, will be their target number. So to give a schema, uh, on some, uh, you can, uh, we can compare letters. Now these letters are not goals. They have to be seen and attended to in order to detect the, let, to de in order to detect the number in their midst. Now we can compare the, the presence of these letters with their, with their absence. When you, that is make a comparison between letters versus blank. And when you do that, then the activity is only, it's a visual task, so the activity is only limited to pretty much visual cortex and nowhere else. And this is not an absence of, of just, just an absence of evidence because if you now do a reverse uh, contrast and look for regions which are more active during blank while, while uh, waiting in front of blank screen compared to looking at the letters, now you see those very regions purported to be involved in making things conscious, they tend to be more active during blank compared to during seeing letters. Now if you are a if you are a skeptic reviewer, you can say, you can say that, look, um, detecting numbers in the midst of letters is easy, and so you don't know if people are really conscious of letters and so forth. Now, obviously, goals are very salient events, right? Goal, uh, so in, in, if, if your task is to detect the letters of, uh, of that, the word, that pseudo word that uh, in this, then obviously those, those target letters are, are salient. But what would be the other most salient non-goal event here, the beginning, right? So, because, so you are not doing the task, you are not doing your search, that, that, sub, that experimental search, at this moment, your search starts, right? So it's a, an extremely salient, very difficult to argue that that, that event is not conscious, but a non-goal event uh, nonetheless. Now, if you look at what happens to neural activity at this point, so everything in blue are the set of regions which deactivate when the task begins, and the, the black plots are, uh, show that. Th that you, you can actually find some very salient conscious event which lead to a very large scale deactivation in the brain. So now, what is the minimal set of brain regions required for conscious experience? Obviously, uh, any claim will have, will have to be hedged by caveats that, uh, that, that, that there are limitations to any form of neuro neuroimaging. Now, having said that, uh, 
my view would be that there is no distinct set of of uh, there there's no distinct set of neural co of of regions which are which who are specialized to make who are specialized in making uh, um, conscious uh, in making percepts conscious what you have is regions that process also make things conscious so if the the processing of that of that event of the of the perceptual event is difficult you'll have more regions correlated correlated with their conscious perception if the percept is easy or ha and habitual like for example in this case the letters that something that you are used to seeing and uh, um, then uh, it can be made conscious by rather minimal set of regions and there are other uh, the, not just my claim uh, there are there is evidence for this in other uh, study as well now the one study made unconscious perception more difficult but compared to conscious perception and they did it by this way so if you were to put two, to your two eyes two different kind of pictures made of made made with complementary colors because these pictures are, uh, are so one eye sees red uh, red background the other side sees green background uh, when you do that then the net perception percept would be nothing because the two will add up and you'll see just a yellow blob now this is more difficult in the sense that your brain is is treated with a, with a contrasting and an ambiguous uh, set of or conflicting set uh, set of information whereas uh, in the other condition they had the same same stimuli to both eyes so the result will be that the person will see a, a house and when you do that now uh, same is conscious opposite is non conscious so you'll find that frontal activity tends to occur when the percept was not conscious i'll skip this it's, it's the same thing from a different study so so what what i tend to find is that there is, that you don't need ongoing increased or um, uh, increased activity in an online fashion for conscious percepts for generating conscious percept um, with with easy conscious with easy perception uh, just the sense just the relevant sensory region is enough for a conscious experience cambridge muslim college training the next generation of muslim thinkers